Hello everybody, how are we doing today? We are going to do a little tutorial video about the camera system or photo mode in Spaceborne 2. Now I have this within another video, I did a short bit about it, but this is going to be more comprehensive as best I can not being a photographer myself and some of these um, descriptions I don't I don't know what they do. Some of these functions, I honestly don't. So there are two different photo types you can take. One is with Steam, and that requires that Steam Overlay be active uh, on your Steam account, and that is F12. So if you hit F12, you notice a sound when I do it. Or if I hit Backspace, now in Backspace, if you look at the bottom right, once that thing goes away, go to the bottom right, you can see it says HUD hidden backspace, turn that on, turn that off, and then I can take an image like this. This is what I do when I go to cockpit view, and I want to take an image to make the transparent cockpit glass uh, for, the, um, for my Patreon. I'll take a photo. Now, this is going to take an image based off of your settings. So this is main menu, settings, video, resolution, and then I have mine set to borderless. I don't know that windowed mode would make any difference. It'd probably still take a full screen image, but that's just what I happen to have. Now, the other way you could do it is by hitting the number nine, and I believe you could probably meet, remap this, so if you have, then it's going to be something different for you, but for me, it is nine. So you can see here, We've got these options down here. Camera, depth of field, color management, tone manager, mapper, post-processing effect, and then capture screen size. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll find, and I'm holding left mouse to move around. You know, I can do whatever I want. I can go all the way around, do all kinds of different angles, do whatever I want. I can also use left mouse, sorry, use WASD to move my character well I, I would say my character I can move the camera uh, viewpoint around and get a different image that way like if I wanted it to be a little closer this is before I use the camera to change things I can just flip around and do different actions now in this first one camera, a lot of times I will, before I do anything, I'll take a screenshot. And I will show you, I'll put down in the description where all these screenshots are stored so you don't have to be digging for them all the time. So field of view is the, is the obvious thing. Zoom in, zoom out. But as you do so, you skew the image. This planet is not a circle anymore, it's an oval. Or if I zoom way, way, way in, you could almost make it a flat earth kind of thing. No pun intended. Uh, reset sets it back to its standard. Then view roll, that's pretty obvious. You're going to skew the image to whichever angle you decide looks great for you, for your picture that you want to take. Image quality. So you can, you can make it look like a potato. I mean, you, you can deadass make it look like like this was made uh, with the Minecraft engine. And I know that's a joke because the Minecraft engine is really taxing on your computer. Um, but you can make it look really, really, really funky. I go the opposite way. And now what I want you to look at... Okay, this bottom left corner, do you see that little star down there? Watch what happens. Here, let's, let's get a little bit better view of it. Let's see if we can find another one. It's way up there. It's a little high. So we'll go right there. Now watch what happens when I drag this all the way up. It's going to take a second because it bogs the computer down pretty hard. There we go. Now you can see this one and you can see this one up here much more clearly. These are actually your warp points. So when you are in a system and you hit B, you can actually warp to another star system without using the Stargate. It's three, four hundred... AU, so it's going to take you a couple of minutes to get there. But you can warp directly. You actually do that in the main storyline. That's what those really bright ones are, and everything in the background is just 
background noise. It's the very distant stars. At this moment in time, we're going to reset that because it's going to bog down everything as we go along, and uh, we'll take some pictures with that later. So depth of field. Now, I have looked a lot of these things up. I have a fair understanding of what they do. The problem is I can't determine if they're working. I have taken f-stop all the way to 1 and all the way up to 32, taken pictures of both, and I couldn't find any difference whatsoever. Like, there was dead-ass no difference at all. In theory, what that should do is either at a low f-stop um, bring more light into the aperture when it when the the image is taken, or if it's a high f-stop, less light in, and that also has some bit to do with depth of field, whereas a low f-stop is a small depth of field, and a high f-stop is a, is a greater depth of field. However, I even blew up the image concentrated like on one thing far away and I couldn't find a single difference so I don't know that aperture is working in the game or maybe because this image back here is probably two dimensionals instead of 3D maybe that's and and this stuff isn't far enough away maybe or maybe it's too far away I don't know I I can't find anything working focal distance this is kind of weird it's at zero right now but as soon as I touch it, it's going to go bananas. <laughs> it's weird. So now I'm going up and up. And I have to get somewhere to about around 120 before it gets back to what it was at zero. And even if I go all the way to the maximum, I can't find any difference at all. If I reset it, the image doesn't change at all. I, I don't know. Is it working? I don't know. The one thing I did notice, and I'll put this back up here because I want you to see something back up there go go there we go so if i hit autofocus it will disable focal distance now watch these stars again watch what happens to them when i hit autofocus to me it, it looks wrong it looks off uh they don't they don't look like a star anymore more like an orangish colored dot on the screen instead of a star and I don't know, the the background stars don't have that twinkle anymore. It, it To me, it doesn't look natural, whereas that looks natural. So I don't use autofocus, and I don't change I don't change anything on this page at all. Nothing with this tab. Color management. Oh. Ah, screw it, we'll leave it at 200. Contrast is exactly what you would expect. You can go to really dark, or you can go to really bright wash it out completely, oh, it was a really foggy day, or to, I can barely see a damn thing. And, I mean, granted, you can get some interesting pictures with it, uh, and normally, if I do anything with contrast, I'll bring it up a little bit, just a little bit, which darkens. Then, saturation is your color or no color. It's actually the best way to take a black and white photo. So, if I take saturation, take it all the way off, this represents a black and white image. Now, if I go into, we're going to jump ahead just so I can show you. If I go to black and white here, meh, black and white here, it looks terrible. It just washes everything out. It's just all, basically all black. And so, it's a better way to do a black and white image using saturation than it is to use the filter for black and white. Now, black and white doesn't work in the space images that well. That's not too bad. I mean, it, you can still see the clouds, and there's some depth to them and all that. Um, black and white would probably work better inside of a station. But you get the idea. Then if I reset this, you go back to your normal colors. Now I can ramp up the colors, and generally it ramps up the red. So there's going to be a lot more orange-red tones to it. Look at my ship. went, like, freaking cherry red. And the stars went from that kind of golden glow to a red. So uh, it's a way you can play with the image to get 
a, a different outcome. Like, like maybe up into right here isn't too bad. You can see what it's doing to the uh, nebula there. Kind of interesting versus this is a little more washed out color-wise, I would say. Gamma's gamma, bright, it's bright. Bright or not bright. And it goes to really bright, and it goes to complete blackness. So if you're in a station specifically, and there's a lot of stations, like the uh, pirate stations tend to be very dark. Um, you can brighten it up a little bit, just, just till some of the details pop on it, and then figure out everything. Now, gain, I cannot describe, or I can't give you the definition of gain, but it's, in my opinion, another way to do brightness. However, the one thing it also does, if you can see, okay, <clears throat> if you look in this portion of cloud that my mouse pointer's on, obviously you see the little background stars, but you also see some noise and same here, I can see a bunch of the noise in it. Now, if I reset this and I just do contrast, I don't get the same. Or if I just do gamma, I don't get that noise as much. I mean, the noise is still present, don't get me wrong, but I can see it dramatically with gain that I can't see with anything else. Normally, if I'm using gain, I'm backing it off to like maybe 85 or so and I'll hit reset to show you in a second just kind of hover your eyes around this area right in the center and watch what happens when I hit reset so basically I, I use gain to give a little more dark detail to it um, I'm probably using it incorrectly. I'm probably using the terminology incorrectly, but that's that's how I will use it when I'm taking an image. Then if you go to Tone Mapper, so it comes default with Film Tone Mapper on. If I de-check this, you'll understand. It gets almost washed out to, to my eye. Put it on and... Yeah, it's it's like it's almost washed out without the tone mapper on there. Whereas this color scheme seems to say realistic is is kind of silly because obviously no human eye has ever seen something like this. Even the the Hubble telescope images are computer enhanced as to what they probably look like. Um, but this this seems more realistic than without tone mapper. Now, Super Sharp, what I think it would do is make a very, very crystal clear image, but I don't notice any difference. It's on right now. It's backed off. I, I'm i not seeing any real difference. I, I, don't, I don't notice anything. Now, I usually take Slope all the way up. Slope, for me, uh, really brings in the dark portions of clouds you watch so when you bring in that kind of I don't know more depth to the dark it brings out the light in your nebula in my opinion so watch the nebula watch it about right here I'm gonna reset it so do you see how again this image seems a little bit more washed out than that. And we're slowly but surely bringing the image closer and closer to something that's just spectacular. Again, this is just my opinion, so take it for what it is. So we go to Toe, and if, again, if I use Toe, I'm bringing it up a little bit to further enhance the dark portions. And I rarely use much, you know, I'll put it up like 0.5 or something like that, or 0.10. Because you go all the way and it, I mean, it, it's a look, but I don't think it's a quality look, because you're, you're losing all the clouds back here. So go back, reset it to 55, and even back it off a bit. I actually don't like it backed off, let's just leave it set at 55. Shoulder. 
I don't know what the hell this thing's doing. Just sit and stare at the screen. Tell me if you notice anything happening when I'm going all the way from left to right. I don't see a damn thing. I Maybe I'm crazy. The only thing I think I see, if you look to the right, the atmosphere of this planet where it's super bright over here, but there, it's more like teal or aquamarine right here. It seems like it brings that color over to the right a little better. I think. And then there's a little bit of a bright spot right here above the capture screenshot thing. That is literally the only thing I can see happening as I change that. So I don't mess with, t with shoulder because I, I don't understand it. Um, again, someone that's a uh, photographer can comment below and let me know. Now, vignette, I, I would say most people probably understand what this is. It, it's like having tunnel vision. So the greater the vignette to the right, the more it brings in kind of a shadow in an ellipse from all the sides. So as I bring this up, if you're looking at the center, you'll notice it getting darker not in the center, but everywhere else. So it's kind of highlighting the center. Now if I hit reset, just watch on the center and, and use your periphery to see. It boop, pops all back up bright. So it's a way that you can focus. And I don't mean focus as, as oh hey, that thing's out of focus. I mean, if you want the center of your image to be the highlight of whatever the picture is you took, you can use vignette to kind of, everything else is there, they can look at it, they can check it out, but you're really focusing on whatever's in the center. Let's take that out. Uh, grain intensity is exactly like it sounds, it makes it grainy. Pull it all the way up, you see all this fuzzy stuff, so you take a picture and it kind of looks like grainy old film, sort of. It's not really accurate because film is actually outstanding quality. Um, fringe. I can show you what it does, but I can't explain to you what it's doing. It's like separating the color into the red, green, and blue spectrum. So I'll run this up. And you can see on these stars, they're not white anymore. They're blue, green, red. Um, I, I, don't under, I don't know what, the, what it's called, what, what this is doing, but... I understand the result, I just don't know how to describe what it's doing. So then you go into, by the way, I forgot to tell you on this very first thing, hide your player, my ship disappears, or if you're on a planet or in a station, your character disappears. So it's a way you can get rid of that. So we go to processing effects, and I've talked a little bit about this before, I tend to use only no processing or film. I feel like film really brings out the intensity of the colors of the the nebulas. The problem is it kind of gets rid of the darker portions of the clouds. Like they just disappear. So what you can do down here on the right, filter intensity, is you can bring this down. Let's say let's go down to about 50%. So now it's only 50% as intense as it was. So now some of these clouds came back, and you've got a little bit more depth there, but you still have some extra kind of color boldness to this. So I'm, if you watch real quick, keep your, I know I'm, this thing's up on the screen, but keep your eyes on the teal right here above me, and watch what happens when I turn the film filter off. Again, it kind of looks a little washed out, without the film filter on, even though I only have the film filter at 50% intensity. And you can play it, so if I go all the way off, that is exactly like it being off. Or if I go all the way on, wow, now it's really intense, but it also kind of hides some of the other clouds. So maybe what you could do in that case is bring your field of view in, even kind of turn your angle, so you, you have all this intensity right in your image instead of having to turn down your intensity if you wanted to do it that way. 
or bring down your intensity. So all the I'll go through each one. You'll see some of them are just glaringly bad. So I'll start with none. We'll go into sepia. Sepia is what everybody knows of sepia. It's not a bad one. I like it. Um, I haven't found a place in the game yet where I think sepia just really pops for a color, though. I don't know what you call this. It's interesting. Kind of like um, neon pastel colors. Of course, black and white, which does, does not work as well as using the, the uh, tone mapper. We did film. Moonlight. Moonlight's kind of cool. I think I would still want to play with some of the other like maybe contrast, maybe saturation to improve it because it's a very dim image, but it would be in moonlight, so it does it quite reasonably well. Um, I do like sunset under the right circumstances. Um, it's definitely it's definitely a, a new image here. I I don't know that I love that it's turning the uh, the background stars kind of a purple. But it, it, it definitely gives you an interesting view. Teal doesn't do much for this one. It does for some of the other colored, but we're already pretty much that color anyway. Um, underwater kind of looks like you're underwater. It's not as great here, but if you're inside of a station, underwater will look a lot like you are underwater. <clears throat> Warm's exactly what you would think. It's kind of like... Um, the warm color tone from a uh, an incandescent bulb. Now, be prepared. It's going to be real bright. Negative, super bright. But what you can do is you can back off negative and do some interesting things with it. Like partial negative, not quite as much negative. So you can, you can play with it and get some interesting looks for it. Cold darkness... For this, for this one, that works pretty well. It really gives kind of an interesting look to the this kind of V shape in this nebula here. Trip is weird. I mean, interesting. It's, it's not my cup of tea, but it is interesting. Ultra heat is kind of a heat map. Super bright, man. That's kind of hurt my eyes. Uh, Nucleon. I don't really know what this one's doing. Uh, yeah, I don't have a good answer for what this one's doing. Hell can be interesting. I found a few places where I I changed it to hell on a few of the images, and it actually looked pretty pretty neat. So I could see see now 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 the dark part of the clouds almost look like they're the foreground, and then all that is the background. Now that I wonder if I change the intensity, see if I can get something really neat out of it. Well, very interesting. You you can do some pretty cool stuff with this. Pinky, yeah, pinky. There you go. It's pink. I feel like neon is just a brighter underwater. That is that's that's some bright shit right there. Ultrasonic. You know, I, I, I know what you can do with this one. So there's a couple of these. Where are they at? Let me look at my page here. So like Chimera, that's gold and yellow. Um, Namek is a kind of golden orange, yellow, even with some blacks in it. Some Kaidan, uh, the, the system Kaidan's got some golden orange. And maybe... Um, maybe even Glitner. So... Glidner, Kaidan, those are going to be in your pirates, your, uh, your red in the middle, because uh, that's a red, orange, black. I could see those working really well with this and being kind of um, god rays, right? Kind of like, Whoa! you know, I, I could see that working really well with those colors. Shades of gray doesn't work for shit. Might work inside of a station, but outside it looks terrible. Oh, wow, that's bright. Okay. Let's try back this off, see what we can come up with.
Yeah, I don't know how well Sketch is going to work on any of the nebulas, at least. That's... God, it's so bright. Red Alert can be real interesting. It doesn't look very good here. I, I've seen it on a few places where it looks pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, go back to your normal. Um, grain fringe, fringe... And then you can take your screenshots. So what I'll do is I will put in the description below... Um, where your images are stored, um, both for Steam and for... Now, Steam is easy to figure out because you just go to the screenshots and pull it up, but um, where it is on your computer, you can make a shortcut to go to your desktop. However, I suggest you don't rename it. Just leave it, say, in shortcut. I renamed mine. I put other folders in it. I had things organized, and... Then I just got on my computer one day, and uh, they were gone. Now they were only gone out of the out of the shortcut. Luckily, everything on the on, in the actual folder was still there. But oh, I was I was I was not happy about it. So, anyways, uh, I'll put down the description, and you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching.